Hey Rail fans, today we watch as Santa Fe 3751 is restored to working order. If you're already a subscriber, welcome back. If you have not subscribed, I'd love to have you, and YouTube will let you know when we have a new video. At Railfan Depot, we celebrate the action, history, and fun of Steel Wheel on Steel Rail. It's hard to believe that just six years ago, the engine was still sitting in Viaduct Park. Located south and west of the depot, the engine had resided here since 1958, having been donated to the city by the Santa Fe. Since it sat out in the open with no protection from the elements, the engine had deteriorated badly. Restoring any steam locomotive to running condition is truly a momentous undertaking. 3751 was no exception. Built in 1927, 3751 was the first 484 for the Santa Fe and the first ever for Baldwin Locomotive Works. After 10 years and thousands of hours of concerted effort, 3751 was returned to the rails in elegant splendor. But first... With the permission and blessing of the Santa Fe Railway, the engine was to be removed from Viaduct Park and taken to Fontana. The engine would be housed and restored at the former Kaiser Steel Plant, now owned by the California Steel Company. A shop area would be constructed out of one of the old mill buildings, which offered a protected environment and an overhead crane. On a warm afternoon in late April of 1986, Santa Fe crews are busy laying sections of temporary track down the street south of the Santa Fe Depot. With the street barricaded, big loaders are bringing in sections of track which are being bolted together. Once connected, these will reach the display track that the engine is sitting on in the park. Almost a full day was spent laying track in preparation for the engine's removal from the park. In some spots, the track was lightly ballasted to support the weight of the heavy engine. While final preparations are completed on the track, volunteers from the San Bernardino Railroad Historical Society are busy preparing the locomotive for the move. Lubrication is being applied to as many moving parts as can be reached. As the time for the locomotive's move drew closer, the volunteer group working on the engine gathered for a group photograph. A temporary lubrication system was rigged to supply oil to the bearings as the engine was being moved. As cables were attached to the front of the locomotive, rail bolts that had been used to prevent the engine's movement were removed with cutting torches. Finally, the last obstacles to the engine's freedom had been eliminated. Soon the slack came out of the cables and the locomotive began to inch out of its prison in the park. For the first time in 28 years, the locomotive was moving again. Any doubts the group may have had concerning whether its wheels would turn or not vanished as the engine rolled free immediately. It was great news that none of the bearings had frozen during the engine's protracted stay in the park. Even though it was a slow process, a large group of onlookers patiently watched as the engine continued to inch out of the park. To the delight of the crowd, the bell on the locomotive was rung, resulting in spontaneous applause. Who knows what might have happened if they had been able to blow the whistle. It would take most of the day to move the engine from the display track in the park to the Santa Fe main line. Once the engine was clear of the park, the temporary snap track was moved again. This time the track was angled toward a yard track where the engine would roll back onto Santa Fe rails. Later, with the engine back on the Santa Fe, a switch engine would pull the locomotive to Colton, where it was parked on a spur. There it would be interchanged with the Southern Pacific Railroad. On May 3, 1986, the SP dispatched two SD9 switch engines to the spur in Colton. 
After coupling to the locomotive, the SD9s would spend the next several hours pulling the engine over the SP main line to Fontana. you're watching this our website YouTube or Facebook thank you if you enjoyed this how about a like or love and leave a comment below if you subscribe YouTube will let you know when we have a new video ready for you join us on Facebook there's a link below every effort is made to match the original specifications throughout the engine work on the boiler jacket nears completion as volunteers make additional adjustments on the installed sheets the cab has been re-lettered with aluminum paint using Santa Fe's original pounce pattern technique. When we took the cab off almost a year ago to start work on it, we didn't even know how much work we were going to find. When we did start disassembling it, we found more and more problems. And finally, uh, it, you know, it just turned out to be quite a, quite a major project in itself. And a lot of research, in addition to the physical work, a lot of research to, to get the right pattern on the wood uh, to find out what kind of wood the window frames were supposed to be made out of. Uh, they were all dry rotted and termite infested. So it, this, is, this really is the first time that we've ever actually seen the cab the way it was intended to be seen. All the time it was in the park, it was just uh, dirt and, and coats of black paint over it. Uh, this color green, it, it, this is the authentic original color that was specified that Santa Fe used in all the cabs and uh, we uh, went to some lengths to get this match. The uh, window frames, this is, these are all made out of ash and uh, which was the originally specified wood for the windows and they are uh, clear finish which was also documented in some of the uh, builders photos that that was the way the uh, engines were delivered. They were not uh, painted. The window frames were not painted, at least in the, when the engine was first out of the shop. We've tried to, to be faithful to the original intent, the original uh, style, and not get too creative with uh, going overboard with the detailing and over restore it or varnish the wood instead of painting it or things like that. Just because uh, uh, we want people that, to, to feel like they step back in time when they step into this cab. We want them to feel like, yeah, this is the way a steam locomotive was in the 1920s. And then it came time for the first real test run outside of her temporary repair shop. Can you imagine the anxiety of the restoration crew? Retired Santa Fe engineer Phillips Koch, a longtime society volunteer, is the obvious choice to handle the operating chores on this occasion. The date is August 18th, 1991, and the Society has scheduled a three-day open house. Not only will it be a successful public relations event, it will also provide a necessary shakedown for the engine and its crew. The remaining seconds seem to be an eternity, but at long last, 3751 is ready to make her debut. Seven fifty one will prove itself, as volunteer Al Phillips has said, a four hundred ton volcano and a people magnet to put the Pied Piper of Hamlin to shame. 